Hello everyone, today I'm working on this 440. Boy, that's going to be fun to fix. It's not as bad as it looks. Uh, I got the uh, the little pilot beam, uh, the pilot truck uh, with the set. So uh, that's going to be an easy fix. It, uh, it did not do well on the auction because it's got a Bluetooth uh, drive shaft here. So uh, I got it. Fortunately, I was able to buy the part from uh, Backman directly. So, uh, like I said before, it's going to be an easy fix. Before I get started, though, I wanted to give you a little history lesson on this model. This is the first one that I bought 30 years ago. It has a really thick uh, drive shaft. Still functions well. So this one, I painted the uh, the side of the wheels here, just had a little extra detail. So I have that for many years. A lot of fine tuning to make it work. It does not go over switches. Although somebody commented on my uh, video from before, apparently some manufacturers make switches uh, that go well. And then this is the other uh, the other generation of them that has a very small drive shaft here let me open that it's got a box that's blue and a very small drive shaft so you guys can take a look at that so these run better they have a very small drive shaft so this one that we're going to work on today is from that generation it's got still a rapido coupler so these pick up electricity 100 percent from the tender there's nothing electrical on the front part so this one does have a knuckle coupler and it's a uh, small drive shaft and the box is blue and they do try to improve them over the years this is the latest version that I have. The box is yellow. And let's take a peek at it. Has better detail. It's got the Backman uh, Easy Mate coupler. So just a little bit better detail. Let's just take a peek at like this. That is a nice looking. This is the best running of them all. To be honest, so the back man they try to improve every year. I think today, if you buy one of their DCC uh, and sound engines, you probably be pleased. I have not bought one yet because the difference in price between uh, Kado and Backman is getting smaller and smaller. Yes, they have improved. The quality difference between Kaido and Backman is getting smaller, but also the price difference. So, also, on the history of these, if you can afford it, get this one, the Atlas one. There's not a lot of them for sale. Um, the obvious reason why there's not many for sale, probably it was low production, but also... People that have them like them. You can see the pilot wheels are metal. Lot, the headlight works. Lots of extra little detail has gone into this. But the most important thing is this is a good runner. Much better than the Backman. So I'm going to keep this uh, close by because I am going to run this engine. It has been sitting in its box for a while. And I do check them every once in a while. Okay, so this one. I don't know, maybe I will uh, change out the coupler. Since I have it in my hands. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this apart completely. As you know, I like to take my engines apart. So um, this is the first screw that I remove. It links the tender to the cab. If I had my drive shaft, I would have to be sure and manage that. 
the uh, the locomotive itself there's nothing electrical in, in here the headlight is just painted silver it's still got a nice detail door the separately applied handrails the little bell little steam dome with the whistle appears to be brass I'm not gonna force it too much but yeah very cute just spin the drive shaft around a little bit it's fairly low geared this all feels really nice actually yeah, i bet if i just put a drive shaft in it it would run and then this part here it'll just snap in there easy peasy lemon squeezy i'll wait till the end and then on this side you have your motor now the motor most likely is glued in there so you can't really pull it out which is kind of a shame you could pull it out you have to wrestle with it they glue them in there so that's got a lot of weight and it picks up uh, electricity from here i'm gonna take a minute i'm gonna go read the comments just to tell you which type of um, um, switches or turnouts that it can go over apparently a uh, pico electro frog turnout allow you to run this engine with switches I don't own any, so I can't really tell you, but that sounds plausible. My issue, oh, did you see that pop out? My issue um, with these is just that part here that is made out of metal uh, will touch the, the frog, so it just uh, creates a short circuit and it stalls. So yeah, did you see that pop out? Usually there's little springs and uh, they just jump out. So that's one of them. Now I've got to hunt down the other one. That is not good. There, I found it. Got a little bit lucky there. I've got both of them. So that is very important. Now, since I have the wheels in my hands, I am going to clean them. I'm not going to force them uh, off the little uh, side frames there. You want to be gentle with that. So I am going to clean them gently uh, with my rag. I don't care uh, how long that takes. It's going to be uh, perfect when I'm done. So I do this to relax so um, it doesn't really matter how long it takes because um, it just allows me to relax more so uh, but that's just a part of the game with end scale if you're gonna fix your end scale engines you're gonna be dealing with some small stuff and you have to be in the mood for that you have to be ready for that um, HO scale has small parts too now. They're starting to get uh, more detailed. So I guess you can't get away with it. Model railroading is that type of an activity. I'm going to hold this together so it doesn't pop out. Because I do not want to lose those springs. Try to have a clean uh, work area when you do that. This screw also is very small. So you don't want to lose that either. When you reassemble it, you reassemble it from this direction, like that. Because gravity will hold your springs uh, in place. So I've got that one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean, uh, clean this little guy up here. So no oil necessary on these. And then I've got... Well, what is this? There's a little washer here. There seems to be only one. Maybe it's an adjustment. I'm not sure if they need it, really. Or if it's supposed to have it. Huh. I'll probably reassemble it without it. And then we'll see if that helps or does not help. So it doesn't seem to have been run that much, but it's been run a little bit. These two screws, they hold the coupler. 
So if I wanted to switch it to say um, a knuckle type coupler, this would be the time. And then guess what? Under this plate is another little spring. So there you go. If you're allergic to little springs that bounce out of the way, that come alive on you and fight you all the way, then um, end scale is going to be awful frustrating for you. So yeah, the little, little, very cute little brass plate, and then that little spring. See now, I told you this was easy. I'm gonna just get it out of there, just so it doesn't bounce out. I've got a few of these uh, plastic fake knuckle couplers. I use them. I could maybe put a, a nice micro train in there. That looks like it's gonna work. Has this ever happened to you, where? Um, you're working on couplers like that and you finish installing your coupler and then you find out that it's upside down happens to me all the time go back and rewatch some of my videos you'll see I do it I think we've all done it maybe maybe you guys are a little bit sharper and you don't put them upside down I try to uh, keep track of that, but uh, you know when you're focused, it's tough. And then this plate, does it have an up, up and down? I'm not sure. And these two little screws. That's going to be tough. I'm going to do most of it uh, off camera. But I can do it. See now, I told you this was easy. You don't have to tighten those very tight just till they stop. You don't need 500 foot pounds of torque on these. You'll just, they're into plastic, so you'll just strip them out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Double check that I put it up uh, correctly. Yeah, that feels great. So up in here, we just have the little motor and it's glued in there so you can't take it out. So if that happens, don't feel bad. Uh, we're gonna test the motor out. So I've got a power pack on the floor and just two wires leading up to my work table. That's it. This is the lowest setting on my power pack. Sounds like what it's supposed to sound like. So that's good news. Let's try the other direction just to see. This engine is probably not going to back up very often. in the test area sounds okay as you run this the engines uh, they do they warm up and they perform better so I'm just gonna put this tender back here uh, together real quick I just set it on the track real quick just to see if it's picking up power and everything's okay. Sounds pretty. 
pretty good actually. Can't complain. Well, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs>